All right, everyone, I am back, and it has been far too long, but today we're going to transition back into things. We're going to do something pretty simple, easy to pull off, and inspired by the latest Apple TV. So what's cool about this is as we scroll up and down, the frosted glass actually scrolls too, and it looks like it's dynamically applying the effect, which uh, on the software side of most applications, this is actually kind of a heavy thing to do. And uh, the reason we're able to do this is because it's not applying it on the fly. It's actually two separate images. We have the frosted glass image that's blurred, and then we have the regular in-focus background image. And the way we put these together is actually really very easy in Adobe Muse. Um, in fact, it responds to the browser width. As I make things smaller, you guys can see that the image is scaling to fill the browser. And as I make it smaller, the uh, frosting <laughs> It's weird to call it frosting, but the frosted glass, it actually still lines up. The two images still line up with one another. And it doesn't need to be 100% page width. This could be a small window. It's not necessary to make it 100% page width. So let's take a look at how to put it together and what our options are. I'm going to make a new site altogether here. Totally blank. Go into this blank page. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to make the page extra long just so we have some room to scroll up and down. And then I'm going to zoom back and I'm just using command plus and command minus here. So now that we're back into 100%, I'm going to show you my cards. So I'm going to go to the desktop real quick, and I have this image of clouds. And uh, this image is pretty big. It's big enough to uh, to fill the browser and still look okay. It's just sort of a regular high-resolution image, you could say. I'm not even sure what the pixel dimensions are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. And here on my Mac, I'm going to hold Option and just drag it to create a duplicate. If you're on a PC, you can copy and paste it or create a duplicate however you normally do, whatever your preference may be. And I'm going to open this second copy in Photoshop just to get things prepared. You don't have to do this at this step. Uh, you could do this later since we haven't even set our initial background image yet. Uh, but I want to have both images prepared just so once once we get into Muse, we can stay within Muse. So this is going to be the blurry, frosted version of this image. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Filter. I'm going to go to Blur. I'm going to choose Gaussian Blur. That's going to be the smoothest blur effect that I can get. And I'm just going to set mine at 40 pixels, which is appropriate relative to this image. And the higher resolution the image is, the higher you're going to have to turn up the radius. Uh, if this image were double the resolution, 80 would look the same as 40. So it is dependent on resolution. Uh, on a very, very low resolution image, 40 could be a huge, huge radius. But you're not going to want to do this with a low resolution image. So with my image, it ends up being approximately 40. And for those of you who are curious, let's actually go and get the, uh, oops, wrong keystroke. Let's go and get the image size here. OK, so for those of you who are curious, this image is 3,300 by 2,200 pixels. So if you want to make your image match, you could size it the same way. So now that I've got my sort of frosting applied, the next thing I want to do, uh, frosted glass tends to be lighter. Uh, it, it doesn't only, uh, it's, it's tricky to explain. The reason that the frosted glass is frosted and not clear glass is because it has a texture to it and it catches some of the light. So because it catches some of the light, it becomes slightly illuminated, therefore brightening what you see through it. Uh, it makes it kind of whitish. Um, so I'm going to actually press Command L here. That's Control L on a PC. I'm going to go into Levels, and I'm going to grab my Output Level for Black, and I'm going to turn it up, which is going to make Black not so black anymore. I'm just going to go up a little bit, which will kind of fade it out. And I could, if I wanted to, I could do Command or Control U to bring up Hue and Saturation. I can get some of that saturation back, just a little bit of it. As long as it's a little bit lighter, it'll still look frosted. It'll take on that frosted appearance. So now I'm going to save it. I'm going to hit Command S to save it. And I'm going to look back at my desktop. And I've now got my in focus version. And I've got my frosted glass version. So now we're ready to head back to Muse. So I'm going to open up Muse. Here we have it. And our browser fill, first and foremost, we're going to set our browser fill to be the in focus version of this image. And then we can create boxes that are frosted on top of that. So I'm going to choose Add Image. And with that, I'm going to choose my clouds, not clouds two. That was my frosted duplicate. And I'm going to hit open. And now that I've got that set, I'm going to position it in the center, which is done right here. And I don't want it to be tiled. I'm going to choose scale to fill. So that way, no matter how big the browser gets, the image will be stretched, uh, stretched proportionally. It's not going to appear stretched, but it's going to scale up to stretch uh, to continue to fill the edges from edge to edge in the browser. Uh, whereas if you do original size, original size is another way to go. Uh, if the browser gets too big and your image isn't big enough, it's not going to scale and you're just going to have white around it, which you can already kind of see that happening here. It's kind of previewing that phenomenon for you. So I'm going to instead scale to fill. 
here we go. And scrolling, I'm gonna say no. I want the image to stay still, and I want the frosted panels to scroll over that frozen image. So let's preview this in the browser real quick. I'm gonna do Shift Command E to preview in the browser. Uh, if you are on a PC, I believe that's Shift Control E. And uh, I am scrolling up and down. You can actually see my scroll bar on the right hand side. Uh, but I don't have anything scrolling above the image, so you can't really tell that it's scrolling because the image is fixed. We told it not to scroll just now. So now coming back in here, I'm going to create a box. I'm actually going to scroll down a little bit and create it down here so it can scroll into view. I'm just going to create a box, arbitrary size, arbitrary position. And I'm going to go into fill. And I'm going to choose to add an image. And I'm going to add the frosted version of that image, my Clouds 2 image. And for those of you who are on a Mac, this is kind of a nifty shortcut. If you're browsing for images and you're not sure if it's the right one at this resolution, it could be hard to tell, uh, you can tap the space bar and it gives you a preview. It's called Quick Look. So you can preview those images and make sure you grab the right one. That could be worth the cost of admission for those of you who are on a Mac who didn't know that trick. So I'm going to select that image. I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to need to make the same decisions here. Fitting needs to be the same. Scale to fill if I chose scale to fill. Center if I chose center. It doesn't have to be center, and it doesn't have to be scale to fill, but it does have to match. So now it matches, so we're good there. Now you guys can see it's scaling to fill this box, which, okay, that's not at all what we want to do. But what's going to happen next is actually going to break that in a very strange way. This, this is where things get a little weird. We're going to go to scroll for the fill of this box. We're going to turn on scroll motion, and we're going to set everything to zero. Zero, 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 zero. So our key position is really irrelevant, this one in the middle here. But the bottom line is don't move sideways, don't move up, don't move down, don't move left, don't move right. Just stay still. The box is going to move. This isn't about the box. This is about the image inside the box. The image inside the box is going to be frozen just like the background image. And they're going to be lined up with one another by the browser. So as the box goes by, it's going to reveal the frosted portion of the in focus image on top of it. And it's going to look like it's frosting it as it goes by. That is the trick. So I'm going to get rid of this real quick. I'm going to preview this in the browser. Again, Shift Command E or Shift Control E if you're on a PC. And look at that. As it scrolls by, it appears to be dynamically, dynamically frosting the background as it goes by. But it's really just two images that are pre aligned with a box that is almost like a mask revealing the frosted version. So if you want to, you could go so far as to select this, you could go up to your toolbar at the top and choose this little button here that makes it 100% width. It looks like it's gone crazy in Muse because Muse is not aligning it the way the browser, the browser does. And then when we open it back up again, sure enough, it's aligned, everything is good to go and you can start dropping text and stuff on there. And then you end up with something that looks like our original example, which turned out pretty cool with the text on top of it. It's a pretty elegant effect. It's very in right now. The Apple TV has made it even more in than ever before, and I believe iOS 9 is pretty heavy on the frosted glass stuff. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you do, I've got more stuff coming soon, and I mean that this time. I'm not going to do another four-month recess. So stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already, and more cool stuff is coming soon. I promise.